Hey everybody, welcome back to GDPG. Hey, was that? A Beowick had to be. Hirun's words come between wheezing gasps. A Beowick something something something. Oh, sorry. Then we're lucky to be alive. Actually, we don't really need to and read that stuff. And we're the only ones. We can't stay here. The audio is in, in the actual footage is going to be pretty low, though, so... Let's get further inside. Oh. Can you walk? She, she eyes the ragged slash across Hedun's belly. Ooh. Ooh. Yep. Hedun's jaw tightens. He nods. Interesting. <laughs> Does it mean Man, he's almost... dying? See, unfortunately... This is reminding me of games like um, the Walking Dead, the Telltale Games series, because now I want to restart with a character that has Dex 15 <laughs> to see what happens. Yeah, Damn. no, I, I understand. At once. That's good, though. It's good that it, it yeah. kind of like leaves you asking questions of, what could I have done more? Yeah. So this is actually the part where I don't know what happens next. Oh. So. You haven't gotten this far? Oh, nope. You told me you played an hour of this game. It took me an hour to get far, this far. Mostly, <laughs> I because guess I, mostly because I was looking at the other things on the screen. Because there's there's a lot to take there's in. There's a lot to take in. Um, formation is a thing. Ooh. Attack, obviously. Cancel, whatever. Wow. Camp. Scouting. Select all. Uh, so so and okay. then your basic inventory here's, character and other shit. Here's a question for you. Yeah. Um, do you think this game throws too much information at the player too fast? I don't think so. Now, because, but, but why? Well, it... Okay, so yes, you've got all of this down here. However, with the pacing of the game and the tutorial that is given, it doesn't... Um, it doesn't introduce those mechanics just yet. And I think that's fine. I think having that stuff there reminds you, hey, at some point I'm going to learn about this mechanic. Hey, at some point I'm going to learn what camping does and what formations are. It's while it has those things available for people who have played games like Baldur's Gate, um, like the formation aspect and, and all that stuff, yes. I think the way that the game sort of introduces you into the concepts is smart and it, do, it holds your hand a little bit towards the beginning. Mm -hmm. um, I so, think the only thing that does sort of throw you for a loop, me personally, mm. um, is the amount of skills and amount of stuff just on your character screen. You know, mm. like, sometimes it could be a little bit daunting until you look at it and realize, okay, it's just going into detail about the basic functions that I sort of already knew about. That makes sense. Yeah. Um, so then, I guess my follow-up question is, um, I, I think I, I mostly agree with you that I don't think they present too much too fast, um, but I think my, my deeper question really yeah. is, do you think it's because this we game expects... Um, players that have already played games like this to be playing this. No, because here, shocker, I never played Baldur's Gate. I watched it be played, so mm. I understood the basic idea going into this. Like, okay, it's a party-based RPG. That's actually all I had. Um, and as such, I've been able to, and it might be because we've been recording for a long time, I'm able to approach things a little bit more critically <laughs> and understand what the game is trying to tell me in the first moments of the game. It's hmm. introducing the basic concept of, of attack, um, what the pausing does before a conflict, uh, the different um, speech dialogues that can happen with your backgrounds, stuff that can happen in those crazy cutscenes, um, and how your character can have an impact on the overall story. In that first scene, it was that was all that was introduced to me. I'm very interested to see what scouting and what formation and all that stuff does when it comes up. Um, Do you think that it will? I think it will. So, I think it has to. So then, if it doesn't come up, do you think that the game is doing a bad job at giving us a tutorial? If it doesn't come up, then yes. Hmm. Because okay. those are mechanics that could be quite useful and have a major impact on how your party functions throughout the game. I, For instance, I agree. There's a camp function. That it, tells what me. What does it do other than, I mean, the obvious, well, right? But, like, does it do? consume resources? Well, does actually, one thing you? I did notice is that next to the camp symbol, there was a zero. Ah, so um, you knew, you do need something to do it. Yes. That also tells me that some of these dungeons can get pretty long. And sometimes ah. you can't go back to town to rest and heal up. Oh, so that's a really good point. So you set up camp in the middle of a dungeon, and I'm guessing there's going to be a mechanic where you see if you get attacked in the middle of the night mm. or something. Um, Maybe. I, I feel like if you can be attacked in the middle of the night, that's actually kind of cruddy. Like, I would much rather there be a mechanic that says, hey, you cannot camp until 
there's, you know... A, Enemies are a, cleared out of the area. I, exactly, yeah. His knee buckles, and before anyone can catch him, he stumbles to the ground, his cheek striking the time word cobbles. Okay. An unsailor like he claws his way off the wall back to his feet, but his stance is shaky like a sailor walking on land after a time at sea. Good. Could we maybe stay here? <laughs> stay and rest for a few hours. Hey, there you go. Yes! Called it! Good, no, th that actually makes me happy. I think the other benefit, too, of maybe not hitting the tutorial points right away, like formation, for example, it we're presented the option to poke that button and kind of play around with it, and... You know, if a tutorial comes up for that later, it's like, oh, well, cool. I already experimented with this, but now I get a little bit more information. And if I never experiment with it, then I just get the information that I need. Um, so I, I kind of like that it, it gave us a chance to notice these in the interface. Oh, so your voice, voice? also impacts your speech options. Oh, that's, that's so awesome. Oh, my God. This game is so cool. All right. Wow. Yeah, their so writers right now, really had to do a, this a is lot fantastic. of work. I'm really impressed with this so far. <laughs> so off the bat, with this mechanic, we're in, we're introduced to a conflict between party members. Mm -hmm. We have two choices: we can stay in camp and run the risk of running into looters and having them come up while we're sleeping, mm. or press on even though he's injured. So this even answers that that question we brought up earlier about whether or not we can be attacked during camp. I say Which I still stand by my guns. I think that's a little cruddy, but eh. I say, let's do it. Yeah. Oh, hell yeah. No offense, but there's people out there I'd much rather die for. <laughs> well. Thank you. Thank you. So this this is interesting, because with how in-depth and, and uh, attention to detail the writers are so far, I wonder if this is going to come up in the future with a, in a conversation with Kalisha. I, I hope so. So here's, here's another question. So we obviously made a, a choice that changes um, kind of... A, how our um, NPCs in our party feel about us, right? Like, mm -hmm. there's there's got to be some underlying relationship mechanic going on in this oh, game. Yeah. They didn't show anything in the interface. It wasn't like, you know, hey, in plus one and, <gasps> and other person minus one. Uh, by the gods, that's better. Uh, you seem surprised. She left. Oh, damn. Oh, that's why she was saying there are much... Are, I, oh, they're much like worse, water much better people. I would prefer to die for, or whatever That's she said. Crazy. So it's you're basically choosing who. She took all our fucking water. Aw, oh, what a dick. That bitch. <laughs> so this is this is. I think this is a situation too where you're choosing which of those two you're gonna stick with. Because had you not camped, I bet you had and would have died. Mm -hmm. We'll be the good guy. We'll be the. Good. It's okay. Well, Chris. here's here's it's the thing water. too. I bet you there's a chance we'll come across her oh, later absolutely. on. So, I think that that's I. Wow. All right. So that's another main mechanic that is introduced within the first hour of this game. You can piss people off, and they will leave. Your party members can come and go. Yeah. So okay, I, I, I started to to make a point. Um, Sorry. But do you think that? they should have a, like, relationship minus one or relationship plus one kind of mechanic to the game. Yes. I don't necessarily know... I'm, hmm, I think they should. If only something small... Oh. A sickly creature emerges from the dark, clutching a spear. Knobby elbows and thin ribs <laughs> show through its scaly flesh, but you recognize it's a shorip, which it watches you cautiously, breathing in ragged size. What um, great descriptions. Yeah, the writers are damn good. Okay. So, normally, I would actually say that relationship mechanics, I'd be happy that there's no, like, variables getting shown. It's like a morality system, right? I usually mm. hate it when it's like, yeah, good guy plus one, or, you know, no. bad guy plus if, one. If it's something simple. Um, but in this game, I feel like we should see these relationship values because it's already such a numbers-heavy game. It actually breaks theme to not show us kind of how the mechanics are tink thinking Oof. the creature cocks its head and approaches you a soft clicking sound emanating from the back of its throat the creature sniffs around you and finds nothing of interest it steps back and resumes its defensive posture <laughs> so now we the benevolent didn't really do anything so mm. we can either just attack it slowly back away or raise your arms and stand still it's defensive it's clearly not going to attack so Creature cocks his head and approaches you, soft clicking his head the back of his throat. Sniffs around. So it's saying. So basically, it's... either fight or don't fight it. Yeah. Which is where Ellie is, you go. 
it All right. basically means that you can't go down that pathway, though. That is true. Although I wonder if you were to go back, does it give you the option to fight him again? Ooh. Ooh, oh. but I'm also curious about oh. this. Oh. Look at the tiles. What oh, is that our... This is a puzzle, my friend. Is that... Was that the girl that was in our party, though? I don't know. Let's find out. Absolutely. Poor Kalisha. Yes! Oh, so one of them was going to die either way! Huh. Holy crap. Although, I guess this way, at least, we got to see a little bit about the puzzle. <laughs> this is true. Okay, so Man. she died in that spot. Um, I'm a little scared. Well, definitely avoid the ones with the... Oh, no! We get all the information I think we need. Why is that? Um, yes, we do. Okay, so we can tell which ones were safe, right? Yes. The, uh, the one with that little swirly. Swirly. That, like, circular one stinging. with the points. That one is the one that killed her, so we don't step on those ones. Okay. So go up to that so second... that one's bad. Yeah, go up to that second space. Huh. And then go left. Nope. I was wrong. Well. <laughs> Wait, did you just oh, die? I, in... I, I, I'm hurt? Hold on. I just died and got right back up. I guess that other symbol wasn't exactly so the same, I but I thought it was close health. enough. Maybe huh. it just knocked me down? I don't know. Oh, 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 I didn't die. I took, I took, what was it? Constant recovery? Trap casts Fan of Flames. See, this is why I like this little box. Here, Activates so constant you know. recovery. Well, that was Kalthor, so she's healing. Grazes Kalthor for five burn damage. Cast Fan of Flames, cast Fan Okay, so the trap, the trap is actually boom, 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 boom. So that's why it's saying it several times. Right, Hit right. Kalthor for 18 burn damage, so that's two hits. Three hits. And then it knocked you out. And it crit me, and it knocked me out. Okay, so sh it made sense what happened. I like that it did that. But does knocked out mean that you you ran out of HP? Or does mm -hmm. that mean that it... if you look, I'm still... My HP is still... So was that just a result of, like... Was it, like, a knockdown I thing? think so. I think okay. knockout was closer to knockdown. So Interesting. I feel like I'm not able to quite pass through that safely as I am right now. Yeah, maybe we like didn't get as much information as that we needed relief gem well tell you what that's all we have for this episode um question of the day uh how do you feel about the relationship mechanic do you think that we should be given those numbers do you think that it's important in a game that's already numbers heavy to do that in order to remain consistent if anything keeping it like a very simple mechanic yeah yeah um, but uh yeah. yeah cool well thank you everybody for watching and we will see you in the next episode see ya